development happening in Niger. For a quick recap, the military in Niger took over in a coup. Regional body ECOWAS responded by demanding a return to democracy, even calling for African Union troops to step in. Now, Niger's army has responded. They've announced that deposed President Mohamed Bazoum will be charged with high treason and undermining state security. Let's continue to unpack this. Joining us now is senior advisor with the International Crisis Group, Lisa Lowe Vaudran. A very good afternoon. The statement on Bazoum's prosecution came just hours, uh, Liesl, after the junta indicated they were open to a diplomatic resolution. I mean, what do you think happened? Uh, good afternoon. Yes, it's tricky. Uh, I mean, the whole situation is very, very difficult for ECOWAS, the regional body, and for the African Union. So, as you said, um, this accusation of high treason, treason uh, comes almost uh, out of nowhere. I mean, President uh, Bazoum generally has been seen as... Um, someone who is definitely not accused of any sort of human rights abuses, political detentions, you know, um, other accusations one might be able to throw to other heads of state. He, relatively, um, you know, the country is also um, very much um, the victim of insecurity and terror groups from uh, the southeast and from uh, from the western side, Niger has been attacked. And honestly, the figures show that compared to uh, Mali and Burkina Faso, its other two neighbours that have, are facing the same situation, Niger hasn't done too badly. So it's difficult to know exactly what these charges are. But obviously, we are now locked in a very complicated um, sort of situation where you have a threat of, uh, as you said, ECOWAS troops um, uh, that w are threatening to um, basically uh, reinstate Muhammad Bazoum if the, the you know, and re reverse the coup, and at the same time wanting to negotiate some kind of deal so that there is a transition to a democratic government. So all of this, um, I think, is part of those very, very, it's almost like a standoff between the military junta and uh, then ECOWAS. Uh, the African Union is meeting today, actually, in Addis Ababa, and we'll hear what they have to say. And if you were to put things into context for a South African uh, liaison this afternoon, what would you say? I mean, what does this actually mean for Southern Africa? It's extremely concerning for the whole continent, actually. Um, of course, our countries are very different to West Africa. I mean, those, a country like Niger has seen several coup d'etat. So the, the nature of the military and the relationship between the military and the government is completely different than we would see uh, in South Africa, definitely. But, uh, you know, remember in Zimbabwe in 2017, none of us actually thought we would see tanks in the streets and then uh, Robert Mugabe being, um, well, some people talk about a military coup, others say, you know, he was, uh, um, it was a constitutional change of government. But in any event, it's extremely, uh, very, very concerning. And also, one has a sense that these regional bodies, like the African Union, that is based on, uh, you know, principles of democratic governance and freedom of speech and representation um, are being undermined increasingly. And we see now in the situation in Niger, you know, it's almost um, what can ECOWAS do? What can the African Union do? It can suspend uh, Niger from the African Union, which I'm sure will be, well, you know, we, it's very, very highly likely that that will be the decision today in Addis Ababa. But um, the other countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Sudan, they're all suspended from the African Union. And they, these military regimes don't seem to really, uh, you know, um, are that concerned about it. So for us, uh, you know, warning bells um, are, are going off about how strong are institutions and our regional institutions like SADC, for example, uh, you know, faced with with increasing insecurity or a sense that, you know, people don't trust their democratically elected governments and that they welcome, you know, whoever um, might do better, including uh, military regimes, basically. Liesl, from your assessment, and you have been following this uh, quite 
closely. I mean, does this spell war for the Western uh, African countries? You know, everybody, everybody that one talks to um, in West Africa and our uh, international crisis group teams in, uh, you know, in West Africa have all said that 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 would be the very, very last resort. And it would be absolutely dramatic for the West African region because um, you have a big country as a country in the Sahel, but uh, Niger that has a military. And then if you would have neighboring countries like Nigeria, um, Cote d'Ivoire and others, uh, their military then basically uh, attacking uh, Niger, you know, it's almost unthinkable. First of all, Nigeria's Senate has said that uh, it doesn't authorize this deployment. So it will be very difficult for Nigeria, but Nigeria is the by far, by far the biggest neighbor, more than a thousand kilometers uh, border with Niger. So if Nigeria's army doesn't participate, you know, it'll be difficult to see, as I say, Cote d'Ivoire has pledged uh, troops. Some other countries uh, might give troops, uh, but others are reticent. So, um, you know, it is, I think, um, all the commentators, all the analysts and people inside Nyame that I've been uh, speaking to, you know, th uh, think that that would be really, really disastrous. But yet, as I said earlier, uh, it seems that the other democratic tools that we have, nonviolent tools like suspension and sanctions, don't seem to be working. So at this point, really, really dialogue behind the scenes with the coup makers is, is absolutely um, what ECOWAS and everybody is trying to make work at this point. And before I let you go, Liesl, I mean, the coup leaders, we understand, had agreed to meet with the ECOWAS leaders. I mean, do we know um, if that meeting has taken place? And if yes, what has come of it? Yes, from what I understand, the very last is that some of the traditional um, religious leaders from West Africa met with the um, uh, military regime, the general in charge in Yame, and they have said there was some kind of commitment following that meeting to say, OK, we will meet with ECOWAS. But from my understanding, that meeting has not yet taken place. The la last week, you know, a delegation from the African Union, from ECOWAS, um, uh, tried to, um, and the United Nations tried to meet with the military junta, and they were not able to. So uh, I think it will be big news if we have a formal sit-down negotiations between ECOWAS and uh, the military regime. And hopefully that will be sooner <clears throat> rather than later. Liesl, thank you so much for your time uh, with us here on today, this afternoon.